Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, and today is another in our Tech A Day series. Today, we're going to talk about JavaScript closures. They are really fundamental to understanding how to structure data and manage data within a JavaScript application. So getting comfortable with them is super critical. Tech A Day is all about giving you a topic every day and having you work through that if you want to. Uh, I really encourage you to do that with this one. After you watch the video, maybe later today, just pull up VS Code, play around with it, bring up the, the inspector in Chrome and just try it out. You know, make sure that you feel comfortable with closures. I'm telling you, every time I do an interview when it comes to JavaScript, and I do a lot, I cover closures. They're that fundamental. The other thing is we're going to cover this in a blue collar coder way, meaning that I'm going to just be very practical about it. We're not going to talk about functional programming concepts. We're not going to talk about monads and f of x equals blah, 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 blah. This is going to be very practical, the kind of stuff that you're going to use on the job. All right, let's jump into the code. OK, so the canonical closure example I've seen is the add one function. So this is not a closure function. This is just going to take a and return a plus one. So let's try that. Let's add one to five. And what do you know? You get six. But now we want something more generic, right? So we want something that's going to add two values. So we're going to create a just a two value adder, A and B, and add those together. But we really want to freeze one of those. We want to say, hey, we want a function that always returns X, but we want to be able to create a fu that function on the fly to add that X value. So here we've got a functor, which is a function that creates new functions. It's called create adder you give it an add amount and it returns a new function that takes one argument value and returns val plus that amount. And what happens is that JavaScript sees when you're creating this function that it requires add amount. So it captures that at that point, captures that value and then creates that function. So let's create that with one. And now we've got this new function called closure add one. Now you don't need to name it closure, but I just did for clarity's sake. And we're going to go do the same thing. Five plus one is six. Nice. So let's go and create one that does the same thing, but adds 10. And now five plus 10 is 15. And what's really neat about this is you can go and now use this with any system that takes a single argument function. So for example, map map goes over an array, it gives actually two values, but we only use the first one. And that first value is the value at that point in the array. And so now we map over one, two, three, four, five with our closure at 10, and we get 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, let's try something else. So let's, let's create a counter. So we'll start with a global counter. Terrible. And we'll create a, a simple counter that when you invoke it, it returns the counter plus one. And so it's just going to keep going up and up and up. So we'll go, let's start at one, then it'll go to two and so on. And it's altered the value of counter because it's global. But let's say that we want to have multiple of these things. We, oh, we could have you know, a global, it's got an array, blah, 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 blah. Oi, don't want any of that. So let's go and create another one of these functors. So we're gonna create one called create counter. It's going to have its own local called counter and it's going to return a function that does exactly the same thing as simple counter. So we'll go and create one called counter one and it returns one. Now we go to create another called counter two, and it also starts at one. Now let's hit up counter one a couple of times. Now counter one is three, and let's hit the counter two, and that's back at two. So every one of those is self-contained. And this is another key element of closures. Closures allow data hiding. So counter, in this case, is hidden within that closure. It's not accessible anywhere else. And this is really interesting because JavaScript doesn't have a private keyword, doesn't have privacy like that. So this is actually a way to create a private variable. All right, so let's take another practical example. So now we've got essentially an API, or the world's worst API. It gives you, have a, we have a name fetcher, first name fetcher, last name fetcher, email fetcher. For some reason, our API is structured so that every one of those is its own thing, each one of those is a function that has a callback and it calls back with the data. We're not going to do any asynchronous stuff here because that's going to make give Quaka a problem. So we'll just do it synchronously. Asynchronous, synchronous, it really doesn't matter here. All right, now we're going to create a 
functor called create collector. And it's going to have a store, again, hidden within it. And it's going to return a function that's a callback. And that callback is going to take data or null if, if there's no data. And then it's going to merge that. So it's going to create a new store object every time where it has the original contents of the store plus the new incoming data merged together. And it's going to return that new store. So the first thing we can do is create a collector. And then we just run it. And because it's null, if you merge an empty object with null, you get back still an empty object. So that's why that works. And now we'll run our fetch name on it and we'll give it the callback of my collector. And now my collector has gotten first name. And then I can run it again on the last name. And now I've got first and last name. And I can run it again on the email. And now I've got the entire set. Nice, right? All right, so let's play again with another thing. So we're going to start capturing things from different scopes. So let's have, we have another global, boo us. It's a first name, and I'm going to create a functor called make name that also takes a last, and then it's going to return a function that merges first and last together. So make a name maker that will add Smith to anything as the last name, Mentos, the name maker. And we'll run that, and because first is currently Jane, we're going to get Jane Smith. But now what happens if I change first to Sally? What do I get? I get Sally Smith. Interesting. So what JavaScript's done is it's not captured a the value of first. It's captured a reference to first. Well, what happens if we want to lock that down? Well, we can go easily do that. We Inside of make name, we can go and clone effectively first, and then we just return that. And now we get Jane Smith. Now, is that the behavior that you're looking for? I don't know. But it's interesting to understand how... JavaScript is collecting these values for you and capturing these values. I mean, is it is it capturing uh, the value or is it capturing the reference? Things to think about, things to experiment with. All right, one more thing. So let's pull a trick from our arrays video where we create an array of 10 items and we fill that with zero. And then we map over that where we take the second value, which is the index, n, or really should be i, but whatever. And then we return a function where we give it n times 10. So we start off with nothing in the array, and then we fill it with zeros, and then we get back all these lambdas. Now, lambda, anonymous function, same thing. So let's see what func zero looks like, and that is a lambda. So let's invoke that lambda, and now we get zero, because zero times 10 is, is still zero. Last time I checked. So now let's run it against seven, and now we get 70. That's pretty cool, right? So the point of this was not really to explain the fundamentals of closure. It was to explain the mechanics of closure, that you're capturing things, that you are hiding state and using this. And that's why I think this video in particular, it's worth thinking about each one of these examples. And then if you don't really understand it, if you're like, mm, I kind of get it, copy it out, bring it into VS Code or whatever you have. I mean, there's a bunch of online editors out there that run code. and then Try it out. Play with the behavior. See what's getting captured and when and if that makes sense. Again, this is really fundamental to understanding JavaScript and how it works. Particularly if you're going to be building kind of framework level stuff or doing data management on the client or on the server. All right, well, I hope this was an interesting video for you. I hope you maybe learned something about closures. And if you did, hit that like button. I'm always down for that. Let other people know. And of course, uh, feel free to subscribe if you like videos like this and hit that bell button to make sure that you get notified when new videos come up, which they have been doing daily recently. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and particularly nowadays, be safe. Stay home. Be safe.